There we go. There we go. Okay. So now for those of you who are new calling in, we have this um, tradition, I guess, at the Reiki Center that towards the end of every year, we do something called the ideal scene. And the ideal scene is basically a law of attraction tool. Uh, and it's something that I learned years ago, actually, and I started doing it and I started to notice these incredible results. So I built it into our Reiki um, community shares and things like this. And then everyone else started noticing really good results too. So now it's become a bit of an institution and every December we get together and we write our ideal scene. So today is going to be a little bit different because obviously we're virtual. And um, so what I thought we would do is I would do a brief introduction about it, give you some ideas as to how to write it yourself. Uh, then the, the kind of magic, I think, is that you, we do the Reiki sharing and that seems to bring our energies up into a really good manifesting vibration. So I don't know if you're fans of um, Abraham's Hicks or Law of Attraction, um, kind of workshops and, and ideas and things like this. But Abraham's talks about getting into this kind of vibratory zone. And when you're in that zone, you can basically put um, like ideas, intention, um, requests out into the universe. And if you're vibrating at a, at a, a really high receiving level, then it allows the manifestation to happen um, in a much more kind of fluid way. And one of the, the issues around a lot of our intention setting is that we've got this element of doubt or that we're not very clear on what it is that we're trying to intend. So then we end up asking for things that actually are not really to our highest good or not really in the direction that life is taking us. So the whole purpose of really aligning ourselves with our intention is um, to really be in that receptive energy whereby we can start to receive all of these things that we're asking for. And the asking is not about, I want a red Ferrari or I want a salary rise or something like this. It's actually much more about aligning ourselves into our life force. So my belief is that when we're really aligned with life force, that everything we actually desire or wish for or kind of want to manifest in our lives are desires because we're supposed to be manifesting them. You know, so it's not like we're sitting there going, hmm, what do I want to what do I want to create in my life? It's the other way around. So it's life saying this is what we should be creating. This is what we should be co-creating. And then that comes to us like a desire, like, oh, I'd like to, you know, work in this career or I'd like to set up a business or I'd like to have a better relationship with this person. So it's kind of flipping it a little bit on its head. It's not so much that we are trying to get stuff. It's more that life is trying to create through us. And so the whole idea of the intending and the ideal scene is to write that into being and line us up with what it is life is trying to give to us, essentially. So it's, it's a, a kind of, it's an interesting way to look at intention. And so our job really is not to come up with what it is we want um, and sit there and go, what are my goals or what are my things and like worry about it. It's much more about getting into alignment so that those desires can flow out of us. And you'll notice this happens. People who've done the ideal scene, you, you know, because this happens every year. So we get ourselves into a really high vibration state and then you just start writing. And then what happens is as you're writing, some, some things will come out onto the page that you know you want because you have thought about it and, and you are aligned with it. And then there's going to be other stuff that comes out that you're like, oh, I never thought about that. Oh, that sounds really good. And so you just keep writing. And the idea is don't think about it. So you're writing from a really open, fun, excited, curious space. You're not writing from a really uptight, I need this to happen. And if this doesn't happen, there's going to be all these fearful kind of issues that happen. 
Um, sorry, I'm just having to tick people as they come in as well. Um, does that kind of make sense? You need a thumbs up emoji, don't you really? Um, so, <laughs> exactly, thank you. Thank you for those on video. It's very helpful to get feedback. <laughs> so I'm talking into the abyss of the internet. Um, so yeah, so that is essentially the idea of the ideal scene and the idea of what I think law of attraction is really all about. It's, it's not really about um, manifesting stuff, you know? And I think all of us know this now. It's kind of in the, when did we start working with law of attraction? Probably in the 1980s or the 1990s. And it was all about, you know, the kind of affirmations and you stick them on your, there's that movie where the guy is like, every day in every way I get better and better and better. And he's like, he had this little affirmation thing stuck on his mirror. Um, we've moved quite a long way from that, um, I think, in terms of self-development. And a lot of the people that are really at the forefront of law of attraction are talking about it very differently to how they used to about a decade or two ago. Even things like The Secret, you know, that, that sensation of the book when it came out. Now, when you read it, it's so old fashioned and it's so like 2000. Whereas now we're, we're really starting to look at, okay, what is life calling from us? And that's a very different way of looking at it. So our job is really about alignment with the life force. And that's what we use Reiki for, right? I mean, that's the, that is what Reiki is. So it's our alignment into Reiki. And then from that position, we then write or we vision or we you know if you like to do visioning boards i mean all of these tools and techniques are still perfectly fine but it's the stance that we're coming into it that is the most important thing so we have to find a authentic stance and if we're not in that authentic stance then everything that comes out onto the vision board or everything that comes out into your ideal scene tends to be ego driven and that the ego is it's like this tiny little conditioned part of us that, that basically has a gender and fear and, and it's looking to, to achieve things and grab things. And it's like a really, really little part of us that doesn't really have a clue actually about what its potential is. So our potential for growth and our potential for manifesting is much, much greater than our egos will ever be able to really grasp because it's coming from a very constricted uh, belief structured place. Whereas our life force is coming from like this open universal, you know, I mean, it's like, it's like massive. So we've got to kind of get into that space in order for us to really be able to manifest some of the, the bigger stuff. And this is, this is the feedback I get from people all the time is when they're writing that ideal scene, it's like the, the inspiration that comes to them or the bigness or the service or the open heartedness is very different to what they expected it to be like. And so for those of you who may have given it some thought, like what am I going to write with my ideal scene 2020? Um, try and keep that to one side when you come to writing and just try and stay open to what it is actually wants to come out of you onto the paper. Um, so in other words, just, just leave aside your thinking mind and move into your intuitive or, or life force and just, it's a bit like automatic writing. You know, you're just going to write, wouldn't it be wonderful? Okay. So that's the stance that we're trying to get into through this process. Then the actual process is actually really simple. It's, so you get a journal or a piece of paper or, you know, if you're going to write a lot, then maybe a couple of pieces of paper and you date it. And the whole point of the date is it's one year ahead. So we're now the 9th of December. So you're going to write 9th of December, 2020. So we're dating it one year ahead as if everything in 2020 has already happened. Um, so then what you're going to do is you're just going to start writing and it can be dear anybody like dear diary, dear God, dear mother, dear, you know, your best friend, but somebody that you, you, it's, it's like a projection. So you're kind of writing to somebody in your mind, somebody that you're sharing the most 
amazing summary of that year too. And I, I usually start with something like, dear you know diary or dear journal oh, i can't believe what an amazing year i had you wouldn't believe that this happened and that happened and um i know a, a few of you have heard this already but the first time i ever wrote it i was actually living in the us and um i wanted to come back to singapore so i actually wrote um in in the thing it was kind of like oh my god i can't believe it at last i've moved back to singapore and i've done this and i've done that and it was actually my 40th birthday and i was like i've just had my 40th birthday in bali and i mean i was writing all this stuff i had no idea how it was going to manifest how it was going to come about um i was at the time um like a trailing spouse so it was my husband that was the one with the job and he wasn't looking at Singapore. So I was just writing all this stuff, right? Just thinking, oh, well, this is my dream. This is my ideal scene and I can just write whatever I want. And as I was doing it, because it was the first time I ever did it, I thought, well, I've got nothing to lose. If I look at it, it's basically the price of a piece of paper and half an hour of my time. So I wrote all this stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff. And then I just folded it up and I put it away. And at the end of that year, um, we moved back to Singapore on, I think it was like the 2nd of January. So I was literally from when I wrote it in the December, I was two weeks off from where, from the date. And it was really amazing. And I had my 40th in Bali and there was a whole bunch of other stuff. I can't remember now what happened. Um, and ever since that incredible insight in, into the power of this kind of manifestation, I've been doing it every year. Um, and to be fair, sometimes I, when I open it up again, I kind of look at it and go, well, that didn't happen. And this didn't happen, but the intention or the directionality is kind of what, what's interesting. Um, so last year I was writing, you know, I finished my book and it's been published and blah, 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 blah. And fair enough, that has actually all happened. So these are the kinds of things that you can start to align with and ask for, and you can ask for really big things, um, or you can ask for whatever you want, really. And it doesn't have to be all practicalities. It doesn't have to be going somewhere for a birthday party, for example, or moving country or moving jobs. It could be something very, very simply, I'm much more expanded. Like I used to write that quite a lot as well. My relationship with my kids have gone to the next level. You know, the relationship with, with my husband has gone to this kind of space of, of loving um, um, ease and whatever. So it's, a, it's really about whatever you want to put into it. And we keep it within a one year time frame. So it's, and again, don't overthink this. It's like, how am I going to achieve this? No, you're writing about as if it's already happened and you don't have to write the how because it's already happened, right? So the how is irrelevant. And that's a, a really important mindset as well. Just allow yourself to dream, allow yourself to think big because at the end of the day, you've got nothing to lose but a piece of paper and half an hour of your time, right? So you might as well think big and just see what happens. I know exactly when actually think big, think big. <laughs> Um, okay, so I am going to uh, take any questions around this process. You can either type it or you can unmute yourself. And let's just see if there are any questions about this. So do you find um, pen and paper better than using the computer? Or it doesn't really matter? I don't think it really matters. I'm a pen and paper person because I journal. So mm -hmm. yeah, I tend to write it in my journal, to be honest. And then it also means I know where to find it next year. <laughs> but up to you, really up to you. But writing, I think the, the, the writing or the typing or the something is more important than just visualizing it or memorizing it because you won't remember it. Any other questions? Or thoughts so or I have I have been uh, writing this on in in a in a new book for the last four years so yeah. it's nice to see every year what I've written you know 
so it's like i i'm sure it will come for the next 10 years so <laughs> the book is very nice to go back and see what i have written and it 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 shows my journey as in you know yeah it's nice so maybe instead of piece of paper maybe do it in a book so it's a good idea yeah that's actually a really nice idea i must admit i have lost many pieces of paper so yeah. I was trying to find my one from last year and I was kind of like, hmm. <laughs> I remember bits of what I wrote in it, but I can't find a piece of paper anymore. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, wow. So yeah, a book is a really good idea, actually. An ideal scene book. Yeah. Nice. That's a good tip. Any other questions? Okay. In that case, my suggestion is we do the Reju and the, um, and the Reiki share. So the Reiki share part is really, um, and I'm just looking at the time, actually, we've got some nice time here. So I would suggest that we go for about 20 minutes. Um, and my suggestion is for those of you who can give an attunement, give an attunement to everybody in the group who's called in. And let's just do a little experiment. Um, so it's kind of like your intention is to give an attunement to everybody in the group and all of those who listen later. Let's just see. And then, you know, you can kind of, we can see if people who listen to it later actually notice the attunement. So that's the first thing. Now, for those of you who don't know how to give an attunement to a group, don't worry at all. Um, you just, you're receiving. So you're just going to relax and receive. And then after a couple of minutes, um, we'll move into the actual sending. And again, if you're not a Reiki person or a Reiki one person, uh, sorry, a Reiki two person, then you're just giving yourself um, hands-on healing. Um, and just absorbing the energy that's coming from everyone else. If you are a Reiki two and above, my suggestion is the label is to all of those who have joined into this call and are listening later or something, words to that effect. So every, anybody who um, is listening to this call right now or later, so we can actually do without the, the whole timing. And again, that means that anybody that does listen on Facebook later, they will also receive a healing. So that would be really nice for us to do just on a, on a more global scale as well. Let's just see what happens. We tried this when we did this last, um, this is only the second one we've done actually, which is why the, the Zoom is so clunky. Um, the, oh, I just lost my thought. So I just looking at Manakshi's note. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. Oh, where was I? Uh, yes, so last, last month when we did it, um, we did a very similar thing where we just sent healing to everybody in the group and it felt really powerful to me. And I did get some feedback from people that it felt really nice to the people in the group as well. So um, it's a really, really nice way of sharing energy. And at the moment, I don't know if you've noticed, but the energy is very high at the moment as we move into 12-12, the, the last full moon of the year and moving into 2020, it just seems to be massive. So hopefully we can harness that energy as well on this full moon week um, and just really invite the energy to come in to, and again, I always think it's quite nice to send with an intention. So this is, this is our ideal scene in, in um, call so ideally we're asking for um the sending to also allow us to come into our authentic vibration for the ideal scene or something along those lines so ideally we are sending healing to everybody in this group number one and who might be listening later and then number two is the intention for this healing is to bring us into full alignment with our higher self or full alignment with our life path, whatever kind of resonates with you around that. And then if we're all doing it together, the thing that I love about group energy is it amplifies. So it's not how many, however, there's 18 of us on now. So it's not just 18 people. There's actually 
I think it's, um, it's squares. So it kind of like, it's not one plus one, it's one plus one equals three. So it, it kind of, is it squaring? It kind of just gets much, much bigger than, than all the 18 of us individually. It kind of really amplifies out. And I don't know, it'd be interesting to see if you feel it as well. But I always really notice group energy, which is why I love to do it in groups. Um, so everyone clear on what we're doing? So let's have a look. Um, so Manakshi, the question about the attunement, my suggestion, but really it's, it's up to you guys how you do it. The way I do it is I literally, uh, and it kind of feels a bit, it might feel a bit weird to you, but I literally feel like all the heads, all the crowns <laughs> coming together and then I'm just doing one, but actually it's all of them. And then I imagine all the hands coming together now for those of you you i mean i don't know if there's any reiki masters from other lineages online great hello if you are but do whatever attunement kind of you've been trained to do and however you want to do it at the end of the day i don't really think it matters we're throwing in our intention and our intention is to give everybody a reju a, a blessing so that's really all our intention is and for those of you is there anybody new to reiki on the group that hasn't got reiki in their hands if so, just, just shout out on the chat. Um, but if you are new to Reiki, then this attunement will also um, help you to activate the Reiki temporarily in your hands. It's not the same as going to a Reiki class, obviously, but it just helps you to join in with the healing as well and contribute your energy to the group as well. So that's really all we're trying to do here. So, so we get going. Sorry. Could you repeat the sentence that you had about the intention of bringing us into alignment? Um, into alignment either with our higher self or with our life flow or something. Because not everybody likes the higher self idea. So life flow or, you know, fullest potential, something, something like that. So essentially what we're asking for is that we're writing our ideal scene. Um, fully in our potential rather than in our little ego monkey minds. That's really what the intention is for that. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, guys, I'm actually going to turn off the video as well because I don't like people staring at me when I'm doing the attunement. Um, and I'm just going to get you guys. If you are on video, um, just turn yourself to mute if you're going to do, uh, sorry, turn your video off if you're going to do an attunement. And we're just going to get going. So for those of you who are receiving the attunement and also for those of you giving, you're just going to center yourself. We're just going to take a couple of deep breaths. And then the way I do it, but obviously you can do it however you want, is you just bringing in every single person that's on this call. And for anybody also who will be listening at a later stage, you're just bringing all of their energies in front of you as if it is one energy. And then we're going to start the attunement. If you're still going with the attunement, you can just carry on. Um, but for those of you who are now joining in with the sending as well, you're now going to send Reiki healing to all those on this call. <laughs> 
listening now or later, with the intention of bringing us all into alignment with our higher self or our true potential or our life force, our life flow. And we'll just send for about 20 minutes and just receive healing from everybody, amplify the energy.
So starting to bring yourself back into the room, deepening your breath, just allowing your breath to go all the way down into the base, down into your feet, feel connected with your feet. I feel as if my head's about to be blown off. Taking a few nice deep breaths, I recommend raising your hands, giving yourself a wiggle. Ooh. Oh. <gasps> Wasn't that fun? Oh my God. What? This was so, so powerful. Oh my God. <laughs> The atonement was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Not cold in Singapore anymore. What was that one actually? It's not cold in Singapore anymore. No. I'm building up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how was that? Oh my God. I just felt my whole body like my feet were going crazy. My hands were going crazy. Oh, that was great. Thank you. Um, I, heart palpitations for like the first yeah. seven and a half minutes, I think. <laughs> uh, no, I agree. Towards the end, I was like, oh my God, my heart can't take this. I feel like I'm going to explode. <laughs> it was very powerful, very strong. And there was the complete unity between yeah. the heart as a core and the rest of manifestation. Um, yeah very, very... that was that was really powerful so take this energy take this feeling don't don't let it all just drift away and go and write your ideal scene now right now and just really allow it to just all come out um, enjoy yourselves drink lots of water that was a really powerful <laughs> powerful treatment so you might be vibrating for a little bit longer and um but yeah just really enjoy yourself and i think next our next meeting is january the 13th so hope to see you guys then i think we're doing another theme similar to um manifesting so we'll do a slightly different angle on it um because then we'll be right into january 2020 right so that will that will be an interesting, I think it's going to be a very interesting year next year. So go and write your best life. Do it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Take care. Bye. See you next time. Lots of love. Happy Christmas. So I don't just catch up with you before then. Merry Christmas. Bye. Thank you, Elaine. See you next year. See you next year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Take care.